uh, if you have been using alcohol for a number of years and you've and it's you've lived to use and used to live it's how you've learned to cope and deal with the issues of life even the thought of becoming clean and sober can become frightening welcome to mission driven i'm Derek, and i'm brother a mission driven is here for us to provide you with information and resources so that you can may help others that are around you that may be struggling with life debilitating addictions we are a Christ-based organization that works with addicts every day. Brother A, we've really been talking about for quite a while here, and it's something that's going to continue going on, but relapse prevention. Yes. And there's a thing that people that have been addicted and then they've gone through recovery and everything, something that they're always dealing with. And I think that's the fear of that they're going to relapse skin. And yeah, it, yes, it's n it's not only the fear of simply relapse; it's the fear of failure in general. You know, it's just it's 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 just a case of you know if you if you've constantly failed, particularly at trying to uh, live clean and sober, uh, it creates you develop such a a a fear in your life, a powerful fear that controls whether or not you even try again. Right. Whether you're even willing to to make the attempt at getting clean and sober uh, out of the fear of failure. Right. And that, is that, do you think because of that fear, I mean, does that cause people not to even, well, fear causes us not to live life anyways. Yeah. Because we're so afraid of doing yeah. anything. Yeah. That we're afraid of failure, like you were talking well, about. Uh, well, fear fear is a is a powerful uh, motivator, uh, in one hand, but fear can also paralyze you. Right. Uh, and so I think in the case of of an a addict or recovering addict, uh, either one of those could be the case. It, it the fear could uh, paralyze them to the extent that they don't really focus on trying to get clean and sober right or it can motivate them in their recovery uh to to stay drug uh, and alcohol free right. uh by because the motivation would be um, I, I i fear falling back i fear relapse as you said so uh it motivates me to make sure i'm uh, uh getting the support i need whether that means I'm going to meetings or whether that means I'm connecting with a sponsor or mentor, whether that means I, I stay engaged and focused in on God and on church and doing the things that I know uh, that right. will help me remain uh, or, and stay cl uh, clean and sober. Right. Um, but fear is a very powerful thing. Right. Do you think there's some positive aspects to fear? So like we're talking about uh, maybe the fear of, and I'm, if I don't stay clean and sober, I'm going to lose my family. Or, Absolutely. So those there's there's mm -hmm. some positive aspects of it too. Absolutely. Yeah. That that's all encompassed in the failure aspect of it. Uh, because if I if I fail, if I'm fearing failure, um, I'm fearing it in the sense of 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 the loss that I may have to deal with if I fail. Right. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because in the case of the. Uh, the, the addict that has allowed fear to paralyze them, uh, that, 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 that fear has caused them to s simply uh, allow themselves to stay gripped by their addiction. Right. Uh, and, and, and not really focused on what, what they need to do to recover. Uh, they, they end up trapped in their addiction. Right. Um, um, the, addict, uh, the addict uh, clearly sees the destruction their addiction is causing I right mean, they can they can see the destruction but the thought of, of of never using again becomes frightening right you know and and i don't know that many think about that aspect of it uh if you have been using alcohol for a number of years and you've and it's you've lived to use and used to live it's how you've learned to cope and deal with the issues of life even the thought of becoming clean and sober can become frightening right because how how am i going to do it this is this is what i went to when i when i was struggling this is what this is how i dealt with uh, or coped with my struggle right and how how can i live how can i make it if i don't have this if right. i don't have my alcohol if i don't have my drug right how will i be able to make it how will i be able to survive right that's a scary thought 
to a lot of a lot of drug addicts. I can kind of relate to that because I mean, there's things that we're all af- afraid of. Yeah, and that we've I don't think any of us that either those who have been clean all their life or anything. There's been something that we've been afraid of. Yeah, and one thing is we can't let that fear paralyze us. Yeah, but we also need to be able to use that fear as well to strengthen us and maybe help us to do what is not right. Right. <laughs> you know, how, however temporal it may be, uh, the addict or alcoholic has found a sense of comfort, a sense of peace uh, in their using. Right. Um, that That's what the drugs and alcohol are giving. Them. So uh, the, the addicted person uh, is dependent as the word we're looking for right there is dependent upon their their drug of choice or alcohol or, or, or whatever the addiction right. may be to find that sense of comfort and peace right. and contentment where 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 they they have nothing else that they can they feel like they can find it in right so, and and I want to give the opportunity right here for those that may be struggling with addiction you may have a loved one that's struggling with addiction um, please reach out to us at here at atctn or heartland adult teen challenge you can find us on the web at atctn.org and there is a button right there that says get help now click on that button fill out that form and somebody will be in touch with you within 24 hours and or you can give us a call at 833-462-8286 you know, another aspect, uh, Derek, of, of this whole uh, fear issue is is the fact that as uh, human beings, we are automatically drawn to what is familiar. Right. Um, it's always often more comfortable and convenient to, to go to what is familiar rather than uh, to focus on changing and doing something different, right? And so a lot of a lot of times the addict is is afraid of change, right? They're afraid of facing the change and what that might look like, uh, and, and so they they automatically gravitate to what's familiar. And you know, so if I was if I'm driving, uh, or in a in a vehicle and I've gone down a I've gone a particular route. A number of times that route is familiar to me right uh, you know so i know how to get to my destination right uh, from that route but if you come up to me and you start communicating to me hey i know a quicker route i know a easier route that you could take to get to the same destination well i might i might tell you well hey you go ahead and go that route i'm gonna go to the route that right. i'm familiar with i've always right. done i don't want to run the i fear taking your route and getting lost even right. though you said it was quicker right but i'm afraid because i've never gone that route before right i've never done that before so if you put that in context with uh, uh the attic and uh the, the 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 person trying to get off drugs and alcohol uh, or, or you know or the person even in recovery right you know a lot of the guys that go through uh, our program adult and teen challenge you know, they go through this process for a whole year and they learn a new route. Right. A new way to live. And we're telling them if you if you go this route, your life is going to be different. Your life is going to be better. But yet they've never gone that route before. Right. What they know is how they've been living for the last sometimes 10, 20 years. Right. And now you're telling me if I do this and it sounds great. Right. Sounds wonderful, but I've never done it before. And I'm afraid right. that I'm a fail. Right. And so uh, I decide even after I complete this and I've gotten all of this knowledge about a new route, a new way to go, a new life. I get out there and it's time for me to face it. Right. And the fear grips me and I go back to what? is familiar right and that's what i was going to ask i was going to ask do you see you have the guys in the program come and talk to you closer to graduation say i'm afraid of getting out there because i mean they've been in the program for a year and or longer depending on what's happened yeah and now they're about to get out into the real world right and outside of our bubble that we have here kind of and actually having to face 
the loved ones, right. the friends that right. they haven't talked to over a year, right. seeing those temptations. So do you have guys coming to you say, hey, I'm afraid of getting out there? Absolutely. And I'm glad you asked that uh, because that, that leads me into uh, the next aspect of, of this whole issue with fear. There's a such thing as a, having a healthy fear. Right. Okay. Uh, and so it's important that the, the recovering addict has a healthy fear. You know, I, I'm more concerned about the guy who has no fear about going back out there after they complete this program <laughs> than I am the, uh, 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 about the guy who is afraid about going back out there and right. failing. Yeah. That's actually a healthy fear. Okay. You know, and oftentimes when we hear the word fear and we think about fear, we think about fear in a negative context. But fear can actually be a very powerful uh, 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 motivation to focus on doing the things that I know I need to do uh, to to maintain my recovery and sobriety as well as uh, my relationship with the Lord, which is the most important thing. Right. And, and so even God instructed us uh, uh, to, to 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 fear. Right. To fear him. Exactly. Yeah. You know it, why? Because if we fear God, we're going to focus on living right. Right. Well, and it's like I work, I do woodworking sometimes as a hobby and I'm dealing with a lot of power equipment, some mm -hmm. table saws and different stuff, different things. And some are really old and they don't have all the safety features. Right. I do fear. I do have some fear right. and a healthy fear. Right. If I don't be careful and watch where my fingers exactly. are, exactly, I'm going to lose that finger. Exactly. So, and that's, and that's like you said, that's a healthy fear That's a because healthy fear, fear will keep you safe. So is it a healthy fear? If I, I fear if I fail or relapse that I'm going to lose my family. Is it a healthy fear that if I, uh, uh, if I, if I fail and relapse that I'm going to lose my job, that I'm going to lose everything that I've worked hard? Absolutely it yeah. is. But that fear, you can't allow that fear to paralyze you. Right. You have to allow that fear to motivate you to do the things necessary right. in order not to relapse or not to fail. Right. Just the same way that we were talking, the Bible talks about fearing God. It also says that God did not give us a spirit of fear. Exactly. But a power and of love and of a sound mind. And guess what? It, guess what it's, it's really talking about there is he, he's, gave, he's given us a, a spirit to walk by faith and not by sight. Right. Uh, so fear and faith actually have very similar meanings. One simply attracts, if I allow it, the negative. Right. The other attracts the positive. Okay. Fear, fear is believing the things that I, the thing that I don't want to happen is going to happen. Right. Faith is believing the thing things. that I want to happen is going to happen. Right. And it, it, it just, it, so, so what I really want, I really, what I really want is to cause my, my fear to be transformed uh, to faith. Right. I heard this quote years ago by Dorothy, Dorothy Bernard. It says, courage is fear that has said its prayers. Hmm. And I thought that was, a, I've, I've always loved that quote because it's yeah. such a powerful quote. So what happens is when I allow myself to walk by faith and not by sight, right. I walk, uh, I, I'm able to have the courage to do the things that I, 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 I re, I, I'm required to do or that I need to do. Right. That will help me stay clean and sober and live for God. But 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 that courage uh, is me allowing fear. It, you know, that courage is what causes me. I'm praying. I'm seeking God. Courage is fear that has said its prayer. So so I, I'm on my face. I'm trying. Courage causes you. To trust God, even when you don't know what the outcome will be. Right. Wow. Let's let that sink in for a little bit. Just kind of think yeah. about that. Yeah. Because, I mean, like we we're talking, we've heard so many people say, well, fear is a bad thing. Fear is a bad thing. Not all fear is. And it's that fear that helps us to move forward, helps us not to go back on going back to that addiction. Correct. Because we're afraid. You know, I found something that I really like now. Yeah. And it's healthy. Right. I've got my kids back. Right. I've got my family back. But if I go down this other path and I know that I can, my eyes are clear because I'm not on anything right, right now. Yeah. I'm afraid if I go down that path, I will lose all this. You know, the, the one thing I consistently 
uh, communicate to the men in Adult and Teen Challenge is that it doesn't take courage to do the wrong thing. It takes courage to do the right thing. Right. And oftentimes with people out there using drugs and alcohol, committing crimes, doing all, or, uh, people don't realize that that's, that, 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 that's not courage. These are people that are, that, that are living in fear. That's why they're doing what they're doing. Right. The guy that just pulls a gun and kills uh, someone else, that's not a coming out of a place of courage. That's coming yeah. out of a place of fear. That's right. And, 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 and if you look at our criminal justice system where we look at all these individuals who are incarcerated for crimes, we often think that they're doing that uh, or, or, or that they're incarcerated due to not uh, to being uh, uh uh, uh, bad people or bad, these are people that are full of fear. That's right. It doesn't take courage to stick a needle full of drugs in your arms. No. All it takes is to be stupid enough to do it. Right. You know, you don't know what, what, whether what's in that syringe is about to take your life or not, but you, it doesn't take courage to pick up a gun and just and shoot a, a, a unarmed person. Because of you, you're trying to rob them or you're trying to uh, uh, take whatever drugs or whatever they have. Right. That's fear. Right. That's ignorance and that's fear. Uh, it takes courage to do the right thing. That's it right. takes courage to live for God. That's right. It takes courage to 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 be committed to living out the word of God and walking in the word of God and being obedient to God it, 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 and 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 that's where you know you have to step out if you're if you're that recovering addict and and put your faith in God uh when you're when you're feeling fear and allow God to transform right. that fear into courage through through your praying through you praying and pursuing God with your whole heart that's right Brother A, yeah. we are <laughs> out of time on this one. I mean, time really just goes by really fast and we really start getting into this. It does. But I want to ask you, as you're watching this or listening to this, do you have the courage? Do you have the courage if you're struggling right now or you know somebody that is struggling? Put that fear aside and give us a call. Amen. Give us a call at 833-462-8286 or go to our website at atctn.org and click on that button and it says get help now do you have the courage to do that i hope so and i pray that you do so but thank you for joining us today on mission driven this has been a broadcast of adult and teen challenge and remember there's always hope through being free from your addictions mm -hmm.